Mega, you have to allow me to share the screen. I'm still not able to. It is, says it is disabled. Yeah, yes, sir. Just a minute. What about Tejal? Also from uh, and I didn't and I didn't argue from different parts of the country. Anyone from West Bengal, Assam, Kerala in this group? Okay, so I'm able to share the share the screen. So I'll start off with this. Let me know if all of you are able to see the screen. And um, yeah, so basically uh, we will talk about also Dr. Uh, Ratandeep, if you can uh, mute your mic, that will help. And uh, you can unmute when we ask questions. Dr. Rat uh, no, Ratandeep hospitals, right? So if you can mute, yeah, got it. Thank you. Uh, Tejal, if you can also mute the mic, that will be good. Okay, so we'll start off now. Uh, slightly got delayed, but uh, let's see how late. 15 minutes late, but uh, so we'll have to make up in some way. So I, I wear multiple hats. Uh, so as you can see, I'm a mechanical engineering professor. I also am a founder of BIT, which I'll talk about later. We also uh, head the uh, School of Entrepreneurship. And uh, what is not written here, but I also have done a considerable amount of uh, software programming, but most, mostly for ma manufacturing domain. So what we'll talk about in today's thing, uh, uh, slightly faster now, is uh, basically that when you have some idea in your, let's say, project, and you want to go all the way and you want to make an impact uh, by creating a startup company, I'm assuming all of you are interested in startup company. So if you want to do that, what are, what are the bottlenecks in the whole pathway? We'll discuss that. I'll also tell you a story about a group of people who are uh, who work with us and they built what we call a smart stethoscope. And then we will talk about behind the scene, what are the factors which make them successful? And finally, some nice tips very at the very end about how to create more success stories. Okay? And uh, what I'll have is I'll have some kind of a, a reflection points after every section. And I want you to, all of you to just go on the chat box right now and type whether you are able to, uh, uh, my, my voice is uh, clear enough. Okay, so please uh, go and type on the chat box. Is my voice clear enough? So, okay, so I'm getting a few yeses here. So I'll go ahead with that. So basically Indians are very, very innovative people. If you just go out, do, India and Jugad on Google, you will find very, very many examples of, of interesting stuff like this. Even in COVID times, uh, Indians have been very innovative, finding nice solutions to, to be, beat the pandemic in some sense. Okay? But if you look at the, our, our market, and then uh, now Amazon uh, big sales and Flipkart big sales are opening up. If you see really how many things that we buy on those websites, e-commerce sites, the consumer goods, the, and, and you know, you're talking about defense products now, industrial machinery now, medical devices, which we'll talk about, and also software. I mean, where are the made in India products? Okay? We are just buying from products which are made by other countries, right? So if you look at our country and our industry right now, including medical device industry, which we'll talk about, we are somehow unable to meet the quality of the Western foreign MNC companies not the cost of the Eastern MNC companies, China, Vietnam, Bangladesh, and so on, right? But if you look at the customers, they still want uh, products with better features, you know, nicer features, more reliable, higher quality, you know, lower cost, and so on. So it looks like it is a hopeless case for all of us, right? For those who want to do innovation. But no, answer is no. Actually, at this point of time, there are so many nice new technologies. 3D CAD CAM, 3D printing, artificial intelligence, machine learning, you know, and of course, your entire new range of materials and, and sensors, internet of things, all these things, cloud-based computing. These are nice new tools by which we can rethink and re-innovate these uh, products uh, from scratch. Okay, and we can really think about design in India, manufacturing in India products. But the problem is that 
it is not done by one person. Each one of you has one domain expertise. Uh, and if you're done doing BTEC, it is just basic information about that particular domain. You don't even masters of the subject, right? But for a medical device innovation, any product innovation, you need people with multiple expertise, okay? And they have to work together, which means that you need some kind of an environment in which you can work together. That's the first point. Second thing is when you really look at the entire, entire product life cycle, and you get some nice idea, which is a concept, but concept is sitting in your head. You have to show it in terms of a physical proof of concept, you know, something which you can say, this is how it's going to look like, it's going to work like, it doesn't really work like that, but you can demonstrate and describe that. That is your proof of concept. The next step is to build a prototype, which actually works, and you can actually demonstrate the working principle of that. Roshan, if you don't mind, if you can mute your mind. Okay. And then, if you, yeah, then you, you take it from product to uh, prototype to product, okay? which is when you actually make a batch of five ten uh, products, you can distribute it to your end users and tell them, okay, give us feedback. And product should work on its own. You shouldn't have to go to the person and explain how it works. So you should have a user manual, things like that. That's the difference between prototype and the product. Once you come to product stage, then you can get the license of manufacturing from the government of India, mass production, set up a factory, buy equipment, hire people, market and distribute and so on, okay? And, and the amount of money that you need goes up almost by 10 times from the first stage to the last stage. Now think for a moment, which you think is the most difficult thing to do? Is it the first step? Because people say that all journeys start with one step. Is it the first step? Is it the last step, which requires a lot of money, a lot of people, a lot of effort? If you're thinking by chance it is the third step, you're absolutely right. The maximum number of failures happen in the conversion from the prototype stage to the product stage. Okay? And we'll go into that a little bit more also. But let me also go back a little bit and talk about why is it like that? Why Indians are not able to uh, innovate and put products in the market? We are innovative, we are excellent people, we are very people. What is wrong with us? So if this is knowledge and products, if you cross them, you'll get four quadrants. So knowledge creation is research. Okay, knowledge transformation. Product creation is developed. Some of the scientists and entrepreneurs don't. Okay. And you can, you know, research in institutions to the really top business. Right? In fact, the whole point is that in India, we generally think that knowledge and wealth cannot coexist. But unless you can convert the knowledge into products and products back into knowledge again, okay, use it for do more research, it's not possible. So you have to put a lot of effort to bring these two sides together. That's why I put Shakti in the middle. Okay. So, so where do we start? Okay. So you can you will be working in multiple areas or you must have thought about different areas, literally A, B, C, D, E, I can keep on going to alphabets. But I feel that biomedical now makes a lot of sense because the kind of requirement that is there in terms of medical devices, you see the pandemic has really brought it to the, to the front, right? How important healthcare is for all this diagnosis and treatment you need it. Plus what happens is in India, our per capita expenditure on healthcare is less than 1% of USA. And we import most of the devices from USA. So if, you, if, if USA can afford, we cannot afford that because our per capita expenditure is, is less than 1%. So even if you give 90% discount, it is still 10 times as expensive as uh, for an average Indian, Indian person. So there is a need to innovate in this way. Okay, so that was my first part where I said that uh, it is important to do innovation. We are intelligent. We have to convert our knowledge into, into products and wealth and so on. But it, it, it is a, there's a pathway. The pathway has values of death. And to cross the values of death, you need to get people together in some sense. Okay? But for doing that, we need to cross this, this mind, mindset, the mental block of, of this knowledge and products and so on. Okay? So at this, I want to ask you one more uh, chat question. Is that I said that medical device is a good area to start with. Do you think that some other area is also equally important? Is it that medical is the most important? Or do you think that, although you are working in medical domain, I'm not saying that. But do you think that apart from medical, we should encourage people to work in one more field, which has similar characteristics as I what I told you just now? And which field is that, is what I would like you to type it out. Okay. Anyone saying anything here? 
which other area you think is equally important. Okay. So let me go uh, food. Yeah, food, agri tech, things like that. I totally agree with that. So let's now go into yeah. So I got it. Okay. So let's me now tell you the story. And this story has uh, three actors. Uh, one person is uh, Tapas Pandey, who is from uh, Dehradun, electronics engineer. At that point of this, this story, he was already got a job, and he was working in a semiconductor uh, company in Hyderabad. Okay. Then the second person is a doctor uh, from a rural hospital called uh, B K Valwalkar Hospital in Derwan, Dr. Nambiraj. The third person is uh, Dr. Uh, is Adarsha. He was also uh, working in industry at that point of time, young engineer, but he is from a software background. Okay, so these three people met for the first time in IIT Bombay when we did a what is called as a medical device innovation camp, which has get people from all over the country and put them together. They don't know each other before the camp, and we tell them to work on a problem. So Dr. Nambira said that the problem is that when a in a rural primary healthcare center patients come, and I'm listening with a stethoscope to their chest sounds. And I have never heard the sound before. I get a doubt: is this a serious condition or not? Should I send the patient to a city hospital for a second consultation? But he says, "I don't want to send these poor patients to city. Going to bus, they are afraid of cities. They don't want to do that." I said, "He said, can I send the sound of the patient, not the patient himself or herself?" So that is how the problem came up. And over the next three days, these people actually uh, uh, developed. Um, Uh, developed a proof of concept of a device they took a normal stethoscope and uh, converted that into digital to uh, analog to digital sound took the sound into a laptop through laptop to internet into the loud speaker in the room so everyone was very happy about it but then they go back to their own jobs after that but after 6 months they came back they called me and said that sir we want to work on this project is it possible to to come to iit and do that but they were working so remember that so they resigned from their jobs Came to IIT at half the salary, one third the salary. Immediately, I put them in touch with multiple hospitals. They talked to hospitals in Bombay, Pune, other places. They actually went and saw how doctors use the stethoscopes. Okay, and uh, asked them, "What is your wish list? What do you really want to do in the stethoscopes?" Slowly, they understood that, and eventually, they built from the proof of concept to prototype, which you can see in this picture. And for prototype, which took another one year to build a product. And they made a batch of 10, 10, 15 stethoscopes, gave to different doctors. We told them just use it and tell us how you feel about it. Okay, they also built a software application on a mobile phone where they can visualize uh, and analyze the sounds. Of course, store and share the sounds, but also visualize and analyze the sounds. So they did that. And uh, what they, their their selling point was that you can, if you love your stethoscope, no problem, keep it. You can convert into a digital stethoscope. By putting this module, this blue module, in between, okay. So now we can do, you know, high fidelity amplification, noise cancellation, of course, other things which I told you. All those things while preserving the look and feel of the normal stethoscope. Why it is so important? When they actually went and talked to doctors, they said, "Please don't give us headphones. Don't give us headphones." They said, "Okay." Um, I'm just trying to see. So someone's phone is got on. This phone got on. Uh, Manasi, you will have to uh, unmute yourself, please. Uh, mute yourself, please. Manasi, please. Uh, yeah, thank you. So, um, so they said, uh, but we can preserve the look and feel. Doctor said, do not give us headphones because the stethoscope around the neck of a doctor is like a identity of the doctor. The patients look up to doctors, especially rural hospital doctors, uh, patients. they want the doctor to look like a doctor with his white coat and his stethoscope around the neck and so on so doctor said please do not take it away from us so this is this took care of that thing and on top of that when uh, these people went to bayrak and i think now you know what bayrak is they applied for the big award the god of 50 lakh rupees award started a company in the incubator of iit bombay called sign the company name is ayu devices and you can see their entire team now now they have 15 20 people in the company and they started selling Initially, they went to a lot of rural medical camps. Now, rural camps. The good thing is that you get to see a large number of patients in a very short time—two, three days, one week. So they went to these camps in Gujarat and Maharashtra, and uh, hundreds, maybe thousands, more than thousand patients. They could uh, use through the doctors, of course, to see, compare how their stethoscope works with respect to the other stethoscopes' benefits and so on. 
and many other competitions like India Innovation Growth Program, EIT, Swiss Next, Zurich, uh, and then Startup Summits of Gujarat, Maharashtra, which came with the uh, orders, purchase orders. So hundreds of purchase orders. And when COVID, COVID came, suddenly they found it as a very big benefit because the stethoscope, the chest piece, and the earpiece need not be in the same place, in the same room also. So now it's possible for a caregiver, uh, let's say nurse, to put the stethoscope uh, chest piece on the patient chest. Doctor can be in the next room or even in, the, in his house. Okay, and they can remotely hear the sounds either real time or maybe stored sound and then give opinion about the patients. And today they have now sold hundreds, uh, 1600 uh, stethoscopes all over the country. Many of these companies are actually telemedicine companies uh, who are finding it very useful to, to connect the rural patients with the, with the expert doctors in tertiary hospitals and cities. And of course, when you do such good things, uh, very natural to get press coverage. They have been in Forbes India, Business Outlook, may, all major uh, newspapers and so on. So it's a two-way street. You do something interesting, uh, newspaper find it interesting to cover you. The moment you get covered, you get a lot of uh, inquiries and, uh, and customers. And of course, also ideas about what to do next. So it's a very holy and nice cycle to go ahead with that. So I uh, talked about this story now as the second part of our talk today. And uh, what you heard was a story of a smart stethoscope. Both the innovators which you heard in the story are not from IIT Bombay. They are from different institutions. Um, and, uh, and look at what they could achieve within three years from meeting and finding a problem. And of course, six months they took to even, even start the actual project. But once they started the project, within two years, they had a product in the market. And in the next two years, they had sold 1,600 pieces of this uh, smart stethoscope. And of course, making a very positive impact on their patients and the customers on the entire ecosystem, they have become now inspiration for uh, many more uh, innovators. And now they start getting orders from outside India. They are now getting orders from Southeast Asia, African countries, and so on. So here is an example of a made in India product, maybe for the made for the world product, okay? So and I now want to ask you one more question. What do you think is a key factor for the success of this, this IU device system? What do you think is a key factor? Just give me one factor, what you think is the most important reason for their success. You can type the answer in the chat box, okay? Identifying a need, yes. Good team, okay. Exchanging of knowledge. Can't you do that? Is that the most critical thing? Jansi, just think about it. Focus and belief, I suppose, you mean, Anjali? They think different from other, other manufacturers. Okay, that is innovation, yes. Most, something which without which they cannot they could not have done this. All of everything that you're saying is right. I don't, I'm not saying you're wrong, but just look at the, the critical thing which is missing in many other teams. And I'll show you a little later, hundreds of ideas, good ideas, okay? Come every day to many people. I mean, you and me sit for next half an hour, we can create hundred ideas. But why all ideas don't become successful in the market, right? That is the, the point I'm, I'm talking about. Meet the situation, trust, so now when you say trust, I don't know what you mean by trust. Trust between the people or between them and other people. Uh, so you have to kind of quali qualify that. Okay? So keep thinking about it and we will come back to this question again. Okay? Um, yeah, user friendliness, all this, everything that you're saying is right, but I want to know the most critical reason. Okay? So let me, let me uh, do it in a different way. Uh, keep thinking and keep writing in chat box, no issues. But let me now uh, tell you about uh, behind the scenes story. Uh, I'm going to show you the lab where this happened. This is the lab in IIT Bombay. It is actually a shed. It's not even a great lab, but uh, but a lot of banyan trees. It's a very beautiful place. We all find it very nice. What is the difference is that uh, from beginning, uh, myself and my team, we, this, we decided that we will not just do research and just write a project report or write a paper or file a patent and then say, my job is over, our job is over. We said, no, we will not do that. 
we will take responsibility for taking our product all the way to the market through idea invention innovation in fact what i told you a little earlier okay so the lab acts like a running partner for these innovators okay so we also have put a process in place okay okay so thank you sonali i got your point so our uh, so we put a process in place we said it we put a four stage process we will define the problem properly then develop the solution then test the solution then the delivery and finally deploy it. and each one is divided into four steps so define includes team building clinical immersion problem definition concept evaluation and feasibility evaluation and so on and similarly develop has designing and prototyping deliver where many people gave up uh, because delivery means making a batch of products and then testing them in the lab and then in in the hospital if possible and getting certification from government saying okay this is safe and reliable go ahead and manufacture it and then actually manufacturing that somewhere along the way filing the patent making a business model raising plus manufacturing and distribution now if you look at this uh, side thing okay uh, we have a list of now uh, 400 problems okay collected from so many people okay 400 problems collected from so many so many doctors uh, in so many hospitals but we have taken only 200 ideas forward out of that only 50 actually crossed the deliver stage and we could file a patent after that and only 20 of them got licensed to either a startup company or to the industry okay so i just want to give two three slides about some of the critical steps within these 16 steps we will not go through all the 16 steps one of the most critical steps actually is problem definition okay problem definition is one of the most critical steps and uh, problem definition is a one line statement of what exactly are you trying to solve the definition should not be vague it should not point to a solution okay i'll give you one very easy tip that you can apply whatever definition you should have must contain three or four things it should have desired outcome which means what it should have clinical need which means why and then the target domain which could be who and where i'll give example also so you understand what i'm saying supposing we say the problem definition is portable cabinet to safely store medicines in rural hospitals you can now see very clearly portable cabinet is what safely store medicines is why rural hospitals is who or where you can say patients in rural hospitals then you can cover both you who and how who and where now this statement sounds very simple and easy right but actually you can spend maybe months weeks and months to do homework talking to people uh, going and looking at what is happening to come up finally to the statement if the statement is wrong you are solving the wrong problem or in the wrong way either way okay so this is one critical thing that i'll tell you that you must do okay number one number two when you create a lot of ideas and all, i'm sure you all you have been taught a lot of ways to create ideas so brainstorming you have heard about definitely and if by centuries if you're not heard just write down and google the words you will know but very important is in life and in this projects what not to do also you will get a dozen ideas but check every idea and and the, i mean the problem definition or the solution idea check do people really need it how many people need it am i making a great value proposition not 10% 20% improvement but can i make it 10 times better faster easier or more effective not just cheaper cheaper doesn't work only cheaper does not work cheaper also works and cheaper is a cheap word say inexpensive affordable frugal use good words like that okay and then is it doable if it's going to take 10 years you will you will yourself not be sustaining the whole effort so do something which you can put in the market in the next 2 years or so and finally you have to have a team okay you have a team which is not just engineers but also engineers and doctors if doctors are not available full time you can say doctors can you give one hour every week so i can come to you or you can come to us we can show you our progress you can give us a feedback if that is not there you cannot do medical device innovation you must have continuous feedback from the clinical side okay and uh, that is the kind of a thing the other thing which people give up many times is that developing a solution is difficult but not impossible but what is very difficult and where people give up is testing the idea before you go to the market because in medical devices especially you got to test and in the lab first to establish a reasonable evidence of safety before you go to human clinical trials okay and it has to be based upon all kinds of things what you're seeing in the picture by the way is a uh, is a tumor knee implant for children with bone cancer 
whose legs get amputated because this tumor is around the knee joint. Instead of amputating the leg, you can open the leg, remove the entire knee joint along with part of the femur and tibia, and replace with a big mechanical joint which you can see in the pictures. In the right bottom picture, you can see the entire X-ray picture of the entire joint. These joints were imported, okay, and then we developed it within the country. It took us ten years, very big project, long project, painful and expensive project, but finally we were able to achieve that. Okay, but testing itself, testing itself took almost like five years of time. Half the time went for testing. So medical surveillance testing is a very important thing, but it based on the risk. So if you are doing a low risk devices, a low risk, uh, which does not go inside human body, then the development is fast. Testing also is easy. Uh, even government certification is easy. So you can actually develop the whole thing within within two years and enter the market also for low risk device. Okay. If you have any questions, we'll take it right after this this uh, end of two three slides. And uh, finally, the one more critical thing in commercialization. Uh, most faculty and researchers and students think that if you have a patent, people will come and license your patent from you. No one cares about your patent. Okay, what they care about is a dossier. Dossier means a file, a file containing your homework. When you went and met the doctors, uh, right now what you are doing now, maybe hopefully you are you are talking to doctors at least virtually or seeing the procedures at least virtually, and understanding your notes, very neatly typed observations and notes, those things. Your list of ideas, list of your uh, evaluation of ideas, your CAD model simulation, um, lab testing results, your clinical feedback from doctors, your uh, bill of materials, component suppliers, you know, and your manufacturing plan, testing plan, all the things, including patent document and government clearances, okay, clinical trial uh, proposals, all the things in one file. Ideally, all the documents signed on that day, not one day, all one signed one day. On the day that that the document is created, that file is worth its weight in gold because when people see the file, they want to partner with you. Government will want to fund you, or your industry would want to license from you, and so on. This is the biggest mistake many people make is they do not maintain the records. We Indians are very poor in making record making anyway. But if you have this ISO one three four eight five, you got to keep records, and uh, if you do that, then you are in very good shape. Then intellectual property filing and uh, sharing. And of course, licensing that to either your own startup company or an industry partner or an NGO. If the NGO wants to give technology free of cost to the not technology but the product free of cost to the end user, and someone, some rich person or a rich uh, society or foundation wants to fund you, that is also business. Social business also is business, absolutely. Okay. So here is the the pictures of uh, what what kind of products were developed in our lab. You can see from top to bottom, literally. Uh, screening devices, monitoring devices, you know, and on the right side you will see um, surgical instruments, some rehabilitation devices. All these were done by young people like you in our lab in the last four or five years. Okay, and in case you are into, uh, curious about this color coding, all the red ones are the startup companies started by the researchers or student themselves, and most of them are BTEC students by the way. Some are master students also, but mostly BTEC students. And uh, the blue ones are the Indian companies which license the technology. And uh, if you see a green star next to some of the things, that is a BIG award. So these people got BIG award 14 times, uh, one fourth. Okay, uh, there are two three which I have not put the pictures. We just got uh, two three more BIG awards in the last round. Okay, so you can see a whole range of stuff, and uh, that should have given you a glimpse of what is behind the scenes, what you need behind the scenes, the facilities. the kind of uh, processes the kind of practices and so on which can create those uh, which basically help this innovators like a running partner why running partner when you're running a marathon race you need someone who is running right next to you it could be the car or a motor bike okay that person cannot run as fast as you but that person has water and glucose and of course a flag to cheer you so this this helps in life because innovation is a very difficult journey you know very very tough journey and uh, it's good to have running partner so the betik lab at the sawar lab and we our lab has some permanent people who are innovators but they don't want to start their own company they said we want to help other innovators that's the kind of people who become uh, mentors or running partners for us okay so here is one more question is that um, if you if you think that you are an institution wherever you are from and i really wish i knew which exactly which universities colleges you are from i was waiting and waiting for the beginning thing and also for the list i could not get that 
but uh, but whichever institution you are from if you if you really let's say five years down the line you think you want to go back and help your own institution in creating an ecosystem like that you know creating a lab maybe you become a rich guy maybe you have a lot of money from your business and you want to give some part of your money back to your own institution saying we need an ecosystem we need a lab like that where other young people can come in and and realize their dreams right so what do you think is the single most important capability or the factor for the running partner not innovator running partner what is a key qualification or characteristic or competence so you can type in your chat box the the running partner not the innovator okay experience and ability to understand our idea so experience yes okay and ability i i like both the words yogesh what else you think is important satyabrata are you the guy saying trust all the time or there other people also saying trust i'm just wondering the word trust is coming little more by the way this lecture i have not i'm not giving first time i have given lecture uh, many other times also and uh, and the largest crowd was uh, was 5000 people uh, which is which was really interesting and uh, the next largest crowd was about 1000 people and last and 500 people so i have given this talk to a large number of people but the word trust i am seeing more today than other other times i am just wondering if that something is something interesting today okay so i want to go back to satyabrata and other people who have said trust why are you saying trust so many times today do we lack trust among among each other or did did you have a trust problem among your team members so i want to hear that by the way if you if you share your problems i may be able to maybe i will learn something from you or maybe i will be able to give you some some response which perhaps is useful to you in future at least hard working marketing knowledge yeah how to tackle unexpected so all these are right so i'll talk about some of these points right now okay excellent funds absolutely absolutely jancy you're right again so let's let's let me give you a little bit more than that i talked about this innovation ecosystem also it's somewhere in the beginning okay and what we do is in our lab betik lab we have a pipeline because one success story now and then here and there it's random it can happen just like that but how do you create a continuous set of success stories is what i want to share with you so what we do is we run a hackathon for example in usually in july august this year we could not do it but hackathon we do it in different institutions uh, usually in and we run it in pune vardha kolhapur uh, nagpur and so on where we bring the local students usually final year students like you they participate in this hackathon and we take the winners of that especially those who want to start a company we take the winners and we bring them to a one week uh, very intensive training program called medic Uh, which happens in october but again this year we are not doing that and again winners of that and you saw the medic from that uh, the story adarsh and tapas they were the winners of the medic in 2015 that first year okay and uh, those winners will come we give them one year fellowship that is the medic innovation fellowship and tell them within one year you develop your product and take it to an exhibition so we conduct our own exhibitions where they can show the device to doctors industry experts or investors Uh, other partners government people other uh, academicians and so on the exhibition is a very nice thing because it tells you in your heart is it really worth going forward to start a company starting a company is easy but making money is not so easy getting customers is not easy okay so before you start a company we always tell people just get one last final validation from public you know no selected public invited public but usually 300 400 people are are there in each of these exhibitions so we get very nice feedback from about 50 doctors 50 let us say experts 50 industry people 50 industry partners like that you know so that you they give very nice uh, feedback and then only you start a company incubate in a uh, any incubator sign is our iit bombay's incubator and once you scale up you can go to a medtech park or industry park or okay there is one thing so here are just pictures of of the medha which we did uh, in various places 
hackathons. The, usually some of the pictures will contain some senior people. They are the jury members. So on the last, Medha is a two-day event, uh, Saturday morning to Sunday evening. Sunday evening, we'll get these senior doctors to look at the presentations. But the longer version of Medha is a medic, which is a five-day affair. Start some understanding clinical needs. The same, define, develop, deliver, deploy. The whole mechanism is taught. But they also build a POC within five days and present it to the jury members. And there are like 200 jury members on, on day five. Again, top doctors and industry people and experts and so on. So that's a very good experience that people go through in these five days. Almost like DNA changing experience. And through the, uh, the camp, uh, people who go to the camp, or they, or some of these are PhD students who go to the camp after they join our lab. So you can see that from the faces, they are there, and also from the specializations, they are also have all specialized. You see, biomedical design, electronics, manufacturing, quality, all kinds of engineering disciplines, management also. And you put them in touch with doctors, which is a very important part. So every day, almost every day, there's some discussion with doctors. You know, our people are in the hospitals or talking to them now in virtual mode, or doctors are coming to our lab and looking at what they're doing and so on. Okay. So if you peep inside our lab, we have some facility, basic facilities for you know, POC building, prototyping, plastics, uh, virtual plastics, electronics, and so on. And uh, our lab is ISO 134 certified, which means that whatever we do, there is a standard operating procedure. There is a form to be filled up, a record that can be maintained by signature. People can't believe that we operate like an industry. But when we, our, when we take our files to industry or government organizations for approvals or hospitals for, uh, uh, for approving clinical trials, it just goes through without any issues because people know they trust us. The word trust came so many times. Why should, why should an Indian doctor or Indian patient trust a made in India product by Indian startup, which is not known at all? That question always actually comes up. Some actually have to say the word trust, but trust in a different way. Trust between the customer and you as a, as a company or your product. How do you establish trust like that? ISO 14485 is one first step towards doing that. And of course, I mentioned during the pipeline exhibitions. So we conduct our own exhibitions in IIT Bombay. So both uh, medics and uh, IIT Bombay, where you can see our prime minister and tech fest, all our IIT Bombay events. But also we participate in other events conducted by the various government organizations, other organizations, and so on. And uh, that gives a lot of feedback to these innovators about, about the devices. Also gives a lot of energy and enthusiasm to, to take the next step. And the uh, interaction and deployment with doctors uh, and you can see in these pictures, every picture almost has one doctor, uh, one engineer, or sometimes one, one patient, okay? Including the baby, which you see is for a club foot monitoring device, for example. So these are the pictures which give us a lot of enthusiasm because uh, although there's no color coding, even the last bottom picture, the doctor uh, and, and uh, the lady which is in the picture is not a, not a, not a clinician, but she's a, she's a mechanical or electronics engineering student. From a local college in Mumbai. Okay, so these are our what we call as happy pictures because they give us our inspiration and, 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 and enthusiasm to do more. Okay, now the last thing I'm coming down, winding down now, uh, and uh, all of you have to worry about uh, champions. Either you are a champion and you have to find what is the, that field where you can champion yourself, or if you are building a team, you want to know. Uh, uh, if you are building a team, you want to know what other champions should be part of your team. So I'm going to give you a nice framework to, to identify your champion area or in your area, other champions, either way. Okay. So again, like last time, four, ax four axes. Uh, on, on Y axis, you have what you really love to do. And on the bottom, what you can be paid for. On the left side, what you're good at doing and what the world needs. How do you know what you really love doing? How do you know that? Is there a measurement for doing that? Yes. If you do what you love to do, you are cheerful. You forget about food and sleep, okay? How do you know what you're good at doing? That is what you have been trained at, your degree for four years, whatever is that. Also, you got some additional certification, additional learning modules. You're confident about it. That is what you're good at. And what you get a job eventually and you get a salary, that is what makes your life comfortable. What the world needs if you do that, it gives you inner happiness and contentment. Now, again, I'll cross those four axes. So what you love to do and what you are good at doing is what is called as passion. I just put a picture so that you kind of identify that you know, passion, what, what is the meaning of passion? Okay. 
Similarly, what you are good at doing and what you get a salary from is profession, obviously. But the same person, after his office hours, okay, does something else like teaching your street kids about uh, medicine or maybe about mathematics, whatever. That is called as a vocation. And finally, what the world needs and what you love to do, if you cross them, you get what is called as mission. Now the trick is, first you think yourself about yourself. What is it that one thing that you want to do in your life, where all the four get connected, or and or, if you decide that this is the area which you want to work in, and you want to get other champions to become your team members, how do you identify those champions? This gives you that framework for for doing that. Okay, so I hope you you got this very well. Okay, so I'll close from this with this one. And in case you want to know more about our lab, which is called Betik, uh, you can go to betik.org. Uh, I mentioned to you that we also have a school of entrepreneurship where we do courses on entrepreneurship. Uh, we are coming up with one course actually in December itself. But if you go to the website, it is not yet announced. You can go and take a look at that. And if you want to know more about me personally, you can go and look at look at my LinkedIn page. Okay. I will not be able to answer individual emails because I get hundreds and thousands of emails, and I don't have a secretary to look at those emails. So I won't be able to respond individually to you. But you can connect with me and my teams uh, through through these these different ways. Okay. So with this, we'll close, and I'll leave one last question in front of you, which is, what was your key key insight or key learning? What is that one thing that you learned today, which I which you feel? Is very valuable and useful to you both. Okay, so let me know that. And if any other questions are there, I can also take that. But we do have another ten minutes or so. So I'm going to stop the screen sharing so you can see me, and also we can um, uh, see you in case it's necessary. Please go ahead with the answer to my question and your own questions if you want. We can take that also. Uh, Dr. Mega, uh, was my line clear still? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, since so now it's your time to you know have the questions with us, sir, and also to answer with us also. Yes. Students, please. I'm not seeing any more questions. I think, um, in that case, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Mega. Thank you very much. Okay, and if in case in case any questions come up, uh, what you can do is you can you can post the questions all questions in one email to me, and I'll put pop questions to you back in one email. Okay. Yeah, sure. Sir. So, mm -hmm. sir, thank you so much for such an informative as well as interactive session. So we student will learn a lot. And I also thank on behalf of Sirsti as well as on behalf of Bayre. Uh, for taking out such a precious time of yours to you know ask your students and we will also request you you know look forward for the future support and your inputs in i mean in such workshops in near future also sir so thanks a lot sure thank you very much uh, good day to all of you thank you very much once again thank you sir thank you sir Uh, hey students, so probably I think you didn't have any sort of questions to talk, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so great. And we are having the lecture tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. for bioengineering students. And by, uh, probably Dr. Megha will, will let you know about the life cycle. Lecture, but for the bioengineering student, it's the lecture is from tomorrow. I mean tomorrow, eleven a.m. Okay, so be ready. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you.